This video is sponsored by Sketchfab. Stick around to see how you can get high quality 3D models for free and also how you can join the 3 December 2021 Sketchfab challenge for artists. Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to Ask NK. Today we're taking a look at Bagapai for Blender 3.0. This is the most recent installment of Bagapai, which means there's a huge set of features coming for this. Now, most of you guys may have actually used Bagapai before and the new update takes it even further. And of course, if you like to get Bagapai, you can go over to the link in the description and can bring you right here where you can download the Bagapai modifier for free. Now, there's something else that also makes a lot of sense that the creator has added and it is called the Bagapai assets. Now, the asset actually comes with about 119 assets that includes plants, rocks, grasses, three stumps that you will be able to use to scatter stuff around your scene and work seamlessly and also work extremely easy. Now, it just makes sense to know that you can also use your own assets, but for the most part, you might want to get this so you can incorporate it as they work perfectly with the bugger pie add-on. Now, with that said, let's dive directly into Blender and take a look at how this actually works. So with Blender simply open, all you need to do to get things happening is go over to edit, go over to preference and then install the add-on. Now for this, you need to install the Bagapai modifier and also the Bagapai asset. It makes sense to do that. And once you're done, tap J on the keyboard. This is what you get. Now, the last time we talked about this, we saw the Boolean architecture. We saw the curves, which means you can array stuff on curve. And now we have even way more things that include scatter IV, you know, point snap instance and also scatter paint. So in case you haven't used this tool before, if you like to Boolean stuff, this is how crazy it is. This add-on is for free, you know, it's extremely for free. So you can just go in and Boolean things like so, and you can also do the same thing and we can do that all the way out. So let me just go ahead and push it all the way out. Actually, you know, it doesn't matter how you choose to do these things. I'll tell you why, because even once you're done and you don't really get exactly what you're looking for, you can always tweak it. So we can select the inner part of any of the surfaces and for sure we can go in and push these things in or, you know, push this out. You always have this sort of creative control, how you like these things to work. And it just makes sense to see that a tool like this is available. Now, once you're done with this, you like to check out. All you need to do is just go over to the object mode and you have it here. And that is actually how easy it is. If you want to bake things, you can simply go ahead and apply the modifier and that way you will bake all these things in. So the next thing which we're going to take a look at is something that makes a lot of sense. And I do know lots of you guys would love this one. Go over to your edit mode. You can simply right click, go down to where you have merge and merge the entire thing to one spot. Now, once you do that, we can now choose to extrude based on a given direction. So I can extrude to this point and then extrude to this other point, another point. And, you know, we can just have fun doing all of this. I can move this over here and then we can get this right there and right about here. So what are we trying to make? Imagine trying to create walls and all you need to do is get a geometry, merge them, create the parts that you want, tap J on the keyboard and click on wall. And that is how easy it is for you to create wall. And you're thinking about windows, super simple. Tap J on the keyboard, go over to where you have windows. And then all you need to do is click and drag. And that way you'll be able to create windows. And you know, it's just crazy. Look at this. You can create windows here and you can create another window. And it is just as cool as it gets. You want to modify these windows. Okay. Select the surface that you want. And then you can go in and modify this however you want. So I can also select this one now and go all the way here and modify that. And I can do the very same thing right over here. And once you're done, switch over to your object mode. And then you can see that you have your windows every single place. It is super easy to use this add-on. And you know, a huge shout out to the developer for making this particular add-on free and always updating it. Now with that said, let's talk about something that is pretty interesting and new with the whole bugger pie tool. So if you tap J on the keyboard, you would notice that we have a new set of scatter. Now, if you do have that asset that we talked about earlier, if you have it installed automatically, they're all going to be here. So if you go over to the assets section, there will be a call for a pie menu that deals with the assets. So if you want to select some plants, you can select plants. And of course, if you like to select rocks, you can select a couple of rocks. If you like to get some trees, they are both stylized and realistic trees. You also have a couple of stumps that you can work with. And of course, there are some grasses that you can play with. So in this case, if we like to simply scatter grasses on the surface, all we need to do is select the surface that you like to scatter things on, go in and tap J on the keyboard, go over to the scatter section, click on assets, select the assets which you like to scatter. So in this case, I'm just going to go ahead and select this one and automatically you get to see 
these things scatter. And you might be asking, how do you control this? It's very simple. Tap and on the keyboard and you'll notice that we have the bugger pie menu here, which you can use to control this. So I can go in for some more stuff. So if we like to increase the density, super awesome. You can go in and do that. If you like to also play with the scaling, you can do that as well. So you can increase the scale and do whatever you want to do. And it starts making a whole lot of sense owing to the fact that this is running based off the geometry nodes. If you're very familiar with the geometry nodes, you can now go in and tweak this to your liking and make some interesting decisions and get the most out of this beautiful atom. Now, this is not the only thing that deals with the geometry nodes as there's even a whole lot of other things that deals with it. Now, with that said, let's also select this and hide it so that we can talk about some more cooler stuff. If you tap J on the keyboard, you can now draw an array of assets. What do I mean? If you select this, you can go in and select the kind of assets you want to draw. So let's say we we'll like to draw in some plants. Let's just find a couple of plants. I think this looks cool. So once we have this here, we can easily start drawing directly on our viewport and you can see this happen live. All right. So you can draw and style and, you know, just control these things however you want. And you might be wondering, what about if I don't want this thing to be in certain areas? How do I control this? How you can control it is super simple. Because you're using a curve, you do have all that curve functionality available to you. So you can select any parts and you can move them and you can simply change them however you want. And this is just pretty dope. And like we mentioned earlier, you want to make these tweaks and make them happen real time. And you want to get a full advantage of the geometry nodes you can go over to the geometry nodes and you can see that the entire thing is based off the geometry nodes, which makes it extremely procedural and you can actually start tweaking these things and getting some pretty cool result. Now, despite the fact that you have access to the geometry node that can help you tweak this, you can also take a look at the bugger pie modifier panel where you would be able to also make some decisions. So in this case, if you like to scale this down, you can scale them down. If you like to have some random position, some random rotation, some random scale. If you like to play with the lens, you can also do that. And you notice that within the modifier, if we do have some scatters, they appear there. If you have array, they appear here as well, and so on and so forth. And of course, if you like to also import more assets in, you can also choose to import more assets in, and you can scatter these things however you want. And with an asset like this imported, you would also notice that you have a couple of properties for all the assets. Actually, every single asset here does have properties. So let's uh, just, just simply go ahead and bring in one more. So I'm just going to go over and let's look at the trees because we haven't talked about them. And I can just bring in a tree like this and import that in. Let's grab that tree. And you would also notice that once I bring in the tree, we also have properties for this. And properties like this has to do with things like the translucency. If you would like to get them more brighter, less brighter, play with the season, you can also choose to do all of this. And it just simply makes a whole lot of sense to see that with the bugger pie modifier add-on, you have full control of all of the assets and how you can tweak them alongside with how you can tweak all the operators that exist with bugger pie modifier. Something else which makes a lot of sense that I do love and enjoy with this new update for the add-on is the IV. The IV generator is now integrated into Bugapi, which means you can get any geometry and you can initiate the IV or initiate IV on them. And there is actually a tiny effector that you can also use to direct how you would want the IV to be placed on the model or how you actually want these things to be scattered. And just like we mentioned, everything here is geometry node, which means you can now take full advantage of this and start creating some beautiful things for yourself. So in most cases, you would like to make arrays, whether you're doing a grid array, a circular array, Bugapi offers you an option where you can make arrays and you can do some very interesting thing. In this situation, we're actually looking at creating a grid array, which is super easy. It's also worth knowing that all these arrays work with the Blender geometry node. So you can go in, you know, knock yourself out, make as much arrays as you want to do. And this is pretty dope. It also makes sense to note that with Bugapi right now, you can also choose to displace your geometry. So depending on the kind of geometry you're working on, you can displace these geometries however you want, increase the subdivision if you like to, and you can use this to create amazing landscapes. And you can also use it to distort a geometry in terms of a simple sphere and convert that to stones. And just like we mentioned earlier, with the Bugapi modifier panel, you can tweak these things to get the most out of it. So when we talk about things that you can tweak, let's take a look at something. So right now I do have this uh, beautiful looking landscape-like stuff. So if we actually tap J on the keyboard and go all the way, you'd notice that we have the point, 
snap instance. And what does this mean? It means that if we go over to the asset section and we pick any of this asset, in this case, I'm just going to go ahead and look for some nice looking trees. I could get this one. And once we have it there, check this out. What we can now do with this is we can now go in and place it wherever we want. So if I click here, a tree appears, I click here, a tree appears and so on and so forth. So in this case, you can simply go ahead and start placing trees wherever you want. And of course, in this way, you can now place things however you want. Let's go ahead and select the surface and we can also scale this up and you can see we have some snapping stuff going on as it actually snaps to points. So this is pretty beautiful. It's also worth knowing that once you're working with the bugger pipe modifier, if you go ahead and you tap J on the keyboard, you'd notice that we have proxies. So in this case, if you don't want to render these, you know, full resolution on your viewports, you can tap J on the keyboard and actually convert them to proxies. And what this would help you do is you can now have a faster scene within your viewport or, you know, your navigation within your viewport becomes faster but then this doesn't change what you get in render. So you do have this right here and it makes sense. So with that said, let's talk about how you can scatter paint on a surface. So you guys remember how we talked about the fact that you can scatter stuff. Now let's go in and throw a simple grid and let's scale this grid all the way up. Next thing which we need to do is make sure that we have a couple of subdivisions there just to make sure that things work pretty fine. I'm just gonna subdivide this, convert that to simple, apply that, and then tap J on the keyboard and go over to where you have the scatter paint. Select the assets you like to scatter paint on the surface. Select the asset like this. So in this case, if this is the one we want, we can just select that asset. And of course, we can go to town with this, you know, just simply start painting and painting. And you'd notice that within the bugger pie modifier section, we have this here. So we can just paint how much we want. And it doesn't matter, you know, if you're not getting the amount of density that you want because once you're done, you can click on exit right there and increase the density however you choose. This is also fully geometry notified, which means that you can go in and make tweaks and changes depending on what you like to get at the end of the day. So pretty cool add-on for those who want to get it. And you can also get some very amazing assets with the bugger pie assets, which you can use to scatter stuff around and speaking about assets let's talk about our sponsors sketchfab sketchfab is a wonderful place on the internet where you can download free and high quality assets so for those who are looking for assets that you can get for free all you need to do is go over to sketchfab go over to explore click on downloadable and check out a huge set of downloadable assets that you can get and one of the most amazing things with sketchfab is the fact that you can preview your 3d models before you hit the download button and of course if you want to download any of these you can just simply hit the download button and grab it and start working with it. Sketchfab always finds a way to help artists hone their skills. And this month, they are doing a pretty cool challenge known as the 3 December. So 3 December is running from now till the 2nd of January. And it is more like a prompt kind of challenge that actually allows you to prepare and hone your skill. So for those who like to join the 3 December 2021, you can simply go through and check out this and you can see it's running for three weeks, which means that you can start creating, sculpting and making beautiful content and following this prompt to help you get to that achieved height of modeling or sculpting that you've always wanted. And once you're done, you can go in and use the hashtag 3 December 2021 while posting your stuff on social media. So this is beautiful. And for those who like to come through and join this, or maybe you want to get some free models, or probably you want to get the bugger pie modifier, or maybe you like to get the assets that can also help the development of bugger pie modifier to continually remain free, then you can go over to the links in the description and check this out. Tell me what you guys think about this one in the comment section. And of course, if you like this video or you learned something from this, you can go ahead and give a like and don't forget to share with a friend. And if you're new here, it's gonna be amazing for you to hit the subscribe button and also turn on notifications so that you don't miss the next video or the next update. And until I see you guys in the next one, peace.